In this tutorial, we will learn about volume constraints in Blender and how to use it in an animation. It makes shape changes look more realistic, but we'll quickly first cover the elements of this scene. So we have added these two models, and now we'll add here an empty, which will control the movements of our models. Let us switch over to the solid view mode, and we want to move our empty along this Y axis. So let's keyframe its Y and Z values for the current frame, and move to say frame number 10. Since this is negative Y axis, let's change its Y value to minus 1.5. At this point, the height can be 1, and we need a keyframe. Then say 10 frames down the line, we will change the Y value of this object to 3, and the height will be back to 0. These keyframes can be easily seen in the timeline editor as well, and we need to add more such keyframes to complete the motion that we need. If we now play this, the empty will move along the Y axis, so the first step is now done. But we want these objects to also move along with the empty, so let's select them together and then the empty. We have to make the empty apparent for these objects. Now if we play this, the objects will move along with the empty. In the next step, we will make it more realistic by adding some angular movements also to these objects. We can do that by changing this X rotation angle for the empty or the parent. So we added some keyframes for the angle, and now we can see that the objects are showing a nice angular displacement as they hit the ground. We can now hide the empty as its roll is over. Then finally, we want to change the height of this object when it hits the ground. So let's go to the first frame and select the object. We need to keyframe its current Z scale factor. Then for its next keyframe, we will change the scale factor to say 0.75 and keyframe it. Then for the next keyframe, when the object is in the air, we will change it back to the original value or 1. Then, when it is touching the ground, this is where we'll have to reduce the height again, maybe to 0.7, with a keyframe as usual. We need to complete this exercise for the entire duration, which we did, and we got these keyframes created for the height. If we play it from the beginning, we can see the change of height for our first model. Now, we want these changes to be copied to the second model. But for this object, we can see that there are existing scale factors. So we have to first apply these scale factors from here. It's important to have no scale factors for the object. Now select these objects together and keep this one as the active object. Then in the object menu, under link or transfer data, select this option. Now its animation data will be copied to this second model, as we can see here. And if we play this animation, both of them will together show a similar change in their heights. But if we look at it closely, we can still see a problem, because the objects should also inflate or increase in size when they touch down, it does not look very realistic if we only change their height alone. And this is exactly where a volume constraint can be proved very helpful. When we reduce its height, the constraint will inflate it in other dimensions to maintain a constant volume. So let's go to the Constraint tab and add a constraint called Maintain Volume. We have to select the strict option for this mode. There are other options suitable for bones and armatures, but we only need the strict mode. And the free axis should be the Z axis, because we are changing its vertical dimension, and we want it to inflate in the other two dimensions. So this constraint will use these two non-free dimensions to increase its size. And the volume factor should be 1, so it will use its rest volume, or the volume, before any change. We will now see that the first model is changing in size, as it becomes shorter. And we will add the same thing for the second object as well, so let's add the volume constraint. The mode should be strict, and this should be Z-axis. Now we can play it for the final time, and both the objects will now show a change in their size. They will inflate each time they touch the ground, which looks very realistic. This is the rendered version of the same thing, and you can download this blend file if you are a member of this channel. This technique is very handy if you are creating some cartoon. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.